All right, welcome back to Soda City Live today. I am so honored to welcome Dr. Macy Smith onto the show today to talk about a topic that's near and dear to both of our hearts, and that is caregivers and caregiver advocacy. So Macy, thank you so much for coming in. We were laughing earlier because our <laughs> wonderful producer booked you on the show. I got the message about it. I said, oh my gosh, she's one of my favorite best people. Friend, best friend, best friend, best friend. <laughs> Thank you for having me as well. Yeah, it's great to see you. And, and it's especially great to be talking about the work that you've been doing on a pretty remarkable build. Oh, Walk gosh. me through that because I had no idea that you were behind it. And then it made so much sense given Afterwards, what you right? do. Yes, yeah. <laughs> well, it just kind of happened serendipitously. Yeah. Um, Mary Daniel actually started this national movement, Caregivers for Compromise. I don't know if you remember, but yeah. um, during 2020, during the pandemic, her husband has later stages of dementia, mm -hmm. Alzheimer's disease and she actually took a job as a dishwasher to be close to him so that way he wouldn't forget her right and so she started this movement I called her and asked her if she would interview with me on my vodcast on YouTube she said absolutely mm -hmm. and so when she talked to me about her bill on the national level or on the federal level it was missing a piece a key piece uh, many of our individuals who live with dementia they really did um, go through a lot during the pandemic yeah. because of their cognitive impairment and they don't live in nursing homes typically some of them do but many of them live in assisted livings which is the dementia care mm -hmm. facility part of the assisted living and that national bill was missing that piece of it and so uh, along with the help of uh, representative leon howard we drafted a bill that included the community residential care facilities, which included assisted livings in the dementia care facility. And so Hannah, what that bill is saying is that yeah. in the event there's another pandemic or a public health emergency, family caregivers up to two would be considered essential. And they are essential, mm -hmm. essential for that emotional support, for that routine, for that familiarity. So during another pandemic or public health emergency, family caregivers would be considered essential and they won't be locked out. They'll have their right to see their mm -hmm. individual, their loved one in person, but of course they still have to meet the safety precautions that right. you know staff meet as well. And so some of these changes or changes that you're working on making a you know a law uh, were bred from the pandemic we didn't know we had some of these holes in right. systems or some of these difficulties that would be presented unless we went through a public health crisis right. and so let's talk a little bit more generally about caregiver advocacy in general which is something I know that you're passionate yes. about oftentimes yes. not to say that they get overlooked but maybe people don't actually realize that they're not there aren't usually a lot of resources for caregivers and so you're hoping to I know in some of the other work that you do provide yeah. some of those resources just talk a little bit about uh, what caregivers go through on a day-to-day -day basis and how you're working to give them a voice so I'll tell you yeah. some people are caregivers Hannah mm -hmm. and they don't identify as caregivers exactly you know that's something I learned in the past year I'm yeah. sure you're you may be a caregiver and don't know it yeah. if you make sure mama has her prescriptions mm -hmm. you're a caregiver Mm -hmm. If you make sure she has food, you're a caregiver. So first to identify what it actually is yeah. and to say, you know, it's okay to care for someone else because you don't want anybody else to do <laughs> yeah. it anyway. Yeah. But you have to take care of yourself first. You've mm -hmm. heard a saying, you can't pour from an empty cup. And everything that you're doing to help support your loved one, we know about 35% of family caregivers pass away before the person they're caring for. And we can't have that no, happening. No. And so what I like to do is see them, hear them, acknowledge them, uplift them, and celebrate them with education, training, and resources. And we have a connection with Lisa's yeah. Care Connection. Yes, yeah. And so those services and those supports are there for them, mm -hmm. but they first have to identify that they do fulfill that role. And not feel guilty about taking oh, time yes. to to take care of themselves. Absolutely. Right? I think that's a huge component. It is Now, huge. something else I wanted to talk about with you is some other work that you're doing, and I just want to make sure I'm getting it right, but it's Saltbox TV. Saltbox TV. You have some educational courses on there. What What's Saltbox TV? What are those courses? Who are they for? Now, Saltbox TV yeah. is pretty cool. Came out of the pandemic as well. Yeah. The co-founders are husband and wife. Mm -hmm. They're theater buffs. The um, um, co-owner, Jerry Gehring, he is a Tony-nominated Broadway, 
Broadway writer. Oh, wow. His wife is a performer and she performed in assisted livings. And yeah. so when the pandemic hit, everything was shut down. And so she called him and said, hey, I want to start this platform so that way um, family caregivers and seniors can have access to entertainment. And so they reached out to me and said, can we host some of your education videos on there? I was like, absolutely, because that was our outlet to get information to um, caregivers and to also professional caregivers in the assisted livings and nursing homes to be able to develop, you know, innovative strategies and entertainment. And so Saltbox TV has wellness and education, but they also have entertainment, nostalgic videos, nostalgic mm -hmm. shows like Andy Griffith, Mary Tyler Got Moore. It, yeah. I mean, and yeah. it's intergenerational as well. It's free. Uh, no type of uh, username or password. Right. You just click and play. And so that's an opportunity to keep our seniors engaged and also family caregivers. So that way they can have their uh, alone time and have their self-care time as well. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, when we go through something like this, like the pandemic, some people, you know, have resorted like, you know, the world is so turned upside down. I don't know what to do. And other people come out of it with these ideas and ways to make it so if we're ever experiencing something as dire as that again, mm -hmm. that we're still protecting some of our most vulner vulnerable population. Absolutely. And those, both the things you're doing, both in the bill and Saltbox TV, sound like ways to not be leaving them out, not to be forgetting them. So. Yes. Listen, before we go, oh, will you also first share some of that information with me so I can post it on my Facebook yes, page? Yes, I will. I so will. we will make sure that people, our viewers at Thank home, you. who could be caregivers watching mm -hmm. at home right Absolutely. now, um, that they have access to that for something they might not even know as a resource. Yes. Last Thank thing, you. you are one of the busiest women I know. <laughs> you got stuff going on. What else are you working on right now? Well, I'm actually an assistant professor at Benedict College. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that too? That too? <laughs> so I teach social work students, and March is Women's History Month, yes, but March is. is also Social work, mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I culminate everything I do and I pour into the next generation of social workers and gerontologists and leaders. And so, um, Hannah, everything just kind of pulls together. And yeah, I'm still doing my work on the Board of Trustees at South Carolina State University. Again, students. That's right. That's right. Listen, okay, well, thank you so much for being on. I'm going to bring you back on for something else. I'm so glad to have you thank on the you. first day of Women's History yes, Month and for something, something so important, right? Thank you, my friend. Yeah.